All right, everybody, welcome to the webinar today. We're going to do a webinar called, Should I Create Digital or Printed Books? And I want to thank everybody for coming in today. We're going to make this really quick and really fast, and we're going to fly through this because who likes to sit on a webinar all day long? I don't. I know you don't as well. So let's get the information out, tell you what you need to know, and get you on with your day. Uh, my name is Jim Kukrell. I am the um, founder of a company called DigitalBookLaunch.com uh, that does book marketing services and creation services for businesses and brands. I'm also the founder of Author Marketing Club, a free book marketing resource uh, and tool place for authors. So if you're thinking about being an author or you want to be an author, head on over to AuthorMarketingClub.com. So uh, I can give you some free tools and training and, and other videos like this where you can uh, learn how to become a better author. Really quickly, a little bit more about me. I have over 15 years of experience on the web as an internet marketer. Uh, I've been doing this quite a long time and I really love what I do. I'm the author of seven books with five more books in, in progress. Um, one of those books is traditionally published with a traditional publisher. Um, and the rest are all self-published, and as you can, you will be able to tell, moving into the future of this presentation, I really, really love the self-publishing business, and I'm going to show you today how to do print and and um, digital books. Uh, I am also a self-employed and happy entrepreneur, and I love making other people into happy entrepreneurs and self-employed as well. If it's something that interests you, I'm glad you're here because we're going to talk about ways you can do that today. I have uh, massive speaking experience. Um, I've been on, on TED. I teach classes for the University of San Francisco's Internet Marketing Program. And those logos up top there are just some of the places that I've had myself or my projects featured over the last 15 years. The uh, reason I show you all this stuff is because I want you to know that I actually know what I'm talking about. And I've been doing this a long time. And uh, I have the chops to back up what I'm, what I'm telling you to do today. Uh, the experience as well, because who wants to take advice from somebody who hasn't actually done it themselves, right? Those are some of my books that you can see on the screen right there. Uh, on the top right, Attention, This Book Will Make You Money, was the book that was published in 2010 um, with a traditional publisher. And then since then, I've published other books. You can see some of them as well. And I've gotten uh, tons of reviews all across the Internet and done all kinds of work as an Internet marketer and a book guy. Now, what's unique about me is that I'm not only an internet marketing guy with all those years of experience, but I am also an author. So I've been able to figure out how to combine my years of experience from both of those things and put them together and teach people how to market, create, and sell books online. Because that's the entire point of everything that we do. The entire point is to create a book that we can use to either make a ton of money from selling the books or use the book to actually generate a ton of sales and leads for the book, okay? Because that is the exact point. So let's roll right along. We got more people arriving here. The truth is, is that digital books is a huge business. Now, Amazon CEO has come out and said that for every 100 hardcover books they sell, they have sold 180 Kindle books, digital books, okay? So that's what's going on in the world today. For every 100 hardcover books they sell, they sell 180 Kindle books. The digital book business is exploding, absolutely exploding. It is becoming a huge industry. The opportunity is immense. The opportunity is just unbelievable. They've sold over 6 million Kindle devices in the last few months. We're doing this in the uh, spring of 2012. Over 6 million Kindle devices. And another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that you don't have to have a Kindle to download a digital book. And this is something that's going to take time for people to realize. And you may not even realize it. But you don't have to have a Kindle to download a digital book. There's a Kindle app that's free. You can install on your iPad. You can install on your Macintosh, on your PC, on your phone, whatever you want. And you can download digital books and read them. A lot of people don't realize that. Just do a search for a Kindle app 
and you'll get uh, uh, the apps you can download and read digital books. Now, in a few years, this is really mind-blowing, in a few years, there's going to be as many e-reading devices out there as there are MP3 players in the world. Think about all the MP3 players there are in the world right now. Everybody's got one. They're on their phone, you have an iPod, whatever you have. Who do you know who doesn't have an MP3 player nowadays? In a few years, everyone, not everyone, but the majority of people will be reading books on digital devices. This is the future, and I don't want to get in an argument with anybody about the power of bookstores, but let's face it. When was the last time that you really cozied up and went into a bookstore? And I love doing that, by the way. I, I love going to bookstores. The, the reality of the situation is that the bookstores are going away. And in a couple of years, you're not going to have the opportunity to walk into a big, giant bookstore and have the experience like you do today. And that's just a fact. It's just the, 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 the business is dying in that form because so many people are figuring out that they can download digital books. But this isn't about bookstores because you can still do print if you have, um, if, you, if, you, if you want to. There's more good news. Anyone today can self-publish. Anyone. Anyone can promote their book through social media. There's never been a greater time in the history of the world to be able to write a book and promote it yourself and, and actually make sales of it and use it to generate sales and leads and publicity for your business. Anyone can profit from writing books nowadays in multitudes of ways. Anyone can build a platform. A platform is your blog. A platform is social media. It's a way for you to get the word out about what you're doing, your book or otherwise. Anyone can do this now. You don't need publishers. You don't need gatekeepers in the middle. You also don't need a warehouse full of books anymore. You don't need a publisher. You don't need someone to stand there and print up a ton of copies of your books and hope that they're going to sell books anymore. The whole entire business has changed. I have a whole other presentation I do at Author Marketing Club. Actually, you can grab it at digitalbooklaunch.com. If you go to digitalbooklaunch.com and you sign up for the email update list, you can watch the video, which is called The New Rules of Self-Publishing, where I talk about this entire shift in the business model and more about all this stuff. But that's not why you came here today. Let's get into the meat and potatoes here because I want you guys to see the difference and how important all this is. Print versus digital. There's a big secret, a huge secret that not a lot of people realize. What is that big secret? Should I do print or digital? You should do both. Because both is what's going to get you maximum exposure to audiences of people who want digital and print books. Now, I said in the future, I think it's going to be mostly digital books. However, in today's day, you can absolutely do both, print versus digital. So today, I'm not going to tell you to do one or the other. I'm going to tell you to do both. And I'm going to show you how simple it is to do both. Now, here's my process. The very first thing that I do, and most successful authors do nowadays, is they create the digital book first. And, and why do you do that? Well, it's much easier and much faster to do the digital version of the book first. You know, one of the reasons I love the Internet and probably one of the greatest reasons I love the internet, is because when you start something out and you want to make it better or change it, you just log in and change it. You know, I come from a background in print publishing before the internet. And when you made an error on a flyer or a brochure or something, you had to reprint everything. In the digital world, you don't have to do those types of things. If you want to update your manuscript or change a cover or change the title, you can literally just log in and change those things. That's why digital books make so much more sense. So in the very beginning, the very first thing you need to focus on is just getting the digital version of your book out because it lets you work out the bugs and get all the things you need to have in place before the print version of it is available. So the very first thing that I do is focus on getting my book up on Amazon. And if you want to put it on Nook, 
and Smashwords and everywhere else, that's totally fine. But I focus on Amazon because Amazon has the most eyeballs. And Amazon is the one place I know where I can get reviews easier. It's the one place I know where I can get the maximum exposure for my book and make sure that it's all right, ready to go before I move on with the print version of my book. I can get reviews on Amazon. I can actually make sales of the book very quickly because I can upload it quickly to Amazon. And I can prove that the book is actually something that people want to buy before I worry about making print versions of it. That's very important. Is your book actually something that is going to people are going to want to buy? Um, I always put my book up on uh, Amazon first and I get review copies out and I get people to read it and look at it. And then I prove the concept of the book. I get people to find typos in the book for me. I, I send out review copies for people. And I say, hey, if you find any typos, just send them back to me. You know, for all the books that I've published, even with professional editing, I don't care what anyone says, you're still going to miss stuff. I've had three different sets of people look through one of my books, and they still miss stuff. And, and you know what? It's always the, uh, the stuff I get back from the person who read the book is like, wow, Jim, I found five typos on three pages, or I found five grammatical errors. errors. And people email me, and they send them to me, and I fix them. And you know what I do? I fix them, and then I re-upload the manuscript to Amazon. It's getting people to proof the book for me is an amazing way to do things. And by the way, you're going to want all that hashed out before you go and create the print version of the book. Now, you can still change the print version, but it, it just it's print. If you print up a bunch of copies of it, you have it in print. So it's very important to go the digital route first. Now, I have a whole webinar uh, recording that I do at Author Marketing Club where you can go to the training section, and you can watch uh, a video that tells you exactly how to upload a book to Amazon. So if you want to get that video, watch that later, go to authormarketingclub.com, go into the training, the resources section, and look for the video that's called How Do I Upload My Book to Amazon. That entire process is built in that video. You can learn how to do that. It's very easy to do, and it's, my, it's the first step in everything that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that you need to do to make your book digital. Now, let's assume that you've got the book digital up on Amazon, you've got all the bugs worked out, you've got reviews of it, You've got people to uh, give you reviews. You've got uh, all your typos figured out. You've got it all figured out. Now we're going to move into this world of what we call print-on-demand. And there's some people in the world who don't understand how this works. Here's how it works. It's print-on-demand. In, in the old world, so when my first book, Attention, was published, what the publisher did was they said, we're going to print 10,000 copies of your book. And we're going to stick them in a warehouse. And every time somebody orders one, we're going to ship them out. We're going to ship a bunch to Amazon, the bookstores, a couple of bookstores may order them, you know, and then every, and we'll replenish their stock every once in a while. Now, the good part about that was, is the book was a, a beautiful, hardcover bound book. But as I said, that business is going away. It's absolutely going away because people aren't buying as many print books like that as they used to. And the publishing companies are figuring out that they can't sell books for what they used to sell them for. And, take, and they also are figuring out that having a giant warehouse sitting around with a million books in it is a huge expense in their small shrinking market. So what they're doing is they're, they're getting away from it as well. They're not going to print thousands and thousands of hardcover books anymore unless you are a proven bestseller. This is something that you should all realize. Unless you guys are proven bestsellers or people that prove that you can sell books, you're not getting a print book deal anymore. It's just not going to happen. No one publisher is handing out bonuses, millions of dollars of bonuses, to, to unknown authors anymore. But there's a great thing that you can do is print on demand. And the definition of print on demand are companies like CreateSpace, which will take your book manuscript and your cover and when somebody orders a printed version of the book, they take the order, they print up one copy of your book, and ship it out to the customer. Now, how amazing is that? And they take your book, they print one copy, and ship it to the customer. 
and the customer has no idea, doesn't know the difference. Now, you're going to say, well, Jim, it's not a uh, beautiful hardcover book. No, it's not. They're not going to uh, be able to print a hardcover book for as cheap as they do. However, I'm here to tell you right now, the quality of the books that they produce are beautiful, glossy, wonderfully bound books that are beautiful books. And I'm telling you, the only difference is that hardcover thing. The only difference. So here's what I do. After the book is up on digital form, I focus on putting my book on print on demand as well. And I use CreateSpace. Now, the reason I use CreateSpace is because CreateSpace is owned by Amazon. And I think that it's just probably smart, since I'm all in with Amazon, to use CreateSpace. What you do with CreateSpace is you go in and you create a new book account. It's free to create a book account. And then you upload your manuscript. They're going to have pages on the site where you can actually download a Word document. And they'll give you a template where you take your book and you format it in the template that they give you. Very simple to do. It takes a little bit of time. But it, it, since they give you the template, that's all you have to do. So you download the template, you convert your book to work in their template so that there's not, it's going to look good when it's printed. Because that's key here. You know, the digital version of books is very rudimentary. You know, it's, it's basically just having your text display the right way. There's not really a lot you can do with the digital versions of your books. But in the print versions of your book, you can make them look as fancy as you want within reason. So they give you the template, you upload the template. And then CreateSpace allows you to proof it and look at it and see what it's going to look like before you have a proof copy made. There are other websites that you can use to create print-on-demand books. Lightning Source, it looks like I spelled Lightning Source wrong there. But Lightning Source is another one that I've heard really amazing things about as well. So if you don't want to use CreateSpace, I've heard that Lightning Source is an amazing thing as well. Lulu.com is another place as well. So you have options. You have lots of options to get your print-on-demand books done. Talked about using the templates already. Um, the cover, okay? So this gets a little tricky when you're talking about the cover because when you're talking about print, you have to have a high-resolution version of your cover to upload to CreateSpace or wherever you upload. So when you have your covers created, now, this is really important. When you have a cover created for Kindle or for Nook or whatever digitally, you don't need a back cover or you don't need a spine because people are only getting the front cover of the book as a thumbnail. So when you have a cover created, whoever you use to have your cover created, you're going to want to make sure that if you're going to do print books down the road, that they're going to be able to give you a high resolution version of that cover that you can use later on down the road or you're going to have to have it recreated. This is extremely important. Let me repeat this again. If you're going to have a print version of your book done, which you should, you're going to want to make sure that your designer gives you a high resolution version of your cover that you can use later on for print because it's got to be created at a much bigger size. It's not just a web size file. It's got to be a much bigger size that you can use to upload so it looks good when it's printed because that when you print things, they have to be done in much higher resolution, much higher size. And if you don't have this done, you're going to have to have the book cover completely recreated and probably get charged again for that. And that is not good. So once you get your book cover uploaded, you have a back on it, you have a spine on it now. You, oh, by the way, uh, CreateSpace and the other sites will actually give you a... a uh, a template file for your artwork for your cover as well. So again, you don't have to guess on the sizes. You know, one of the things that the traditional publishers of the world did for so long was they made it so uh, uh, hard for us to, to figure out how to do these things because they were in control. Well, you can do this now. They're going to give you templates that show you what to do. Take that template and send it to your designer and go, hey, make my cover, my back cover, and my spine in this template. They'll, they give you the templates for free. Send it to your designer and have them do, handle it for you, okay? Now, once the book is uploaded, you format, you look through it, you flip through it online, you look to see that it's looking okay, the cover's right. What you should do is you should order a proof copy. And what that means is CreateSpace is going to take one copy, they're going to print one copy of the book, 
and they're going to ship it to you. So you can actually see what the book's going to look like. See how it looks, see how it feels, see how it smells. You're going to look through it again, make sure the formatting's are right, make sure the cover looks right, and you're going to be like, okay, this is done. Then you approve it, and it's that simple. Now, I just recently went through this process with, uh, I'm trying to do it with all of my books. I get all my books in digital form first, and then I work on getting them up in print form. So the last book I did was Business Around a Lifestyle, and I just got um, 25 copies of it delivered to my office last week that I'm taking to an event. We'll talk about that. But I ordered the proof copy first, I checked it out, and I realized that there were some changes I wanted to make. So I made some changes, I went back, I fixed those, and then I went out and ordered my copies of my book. So let's talk about when you order those copies of your book. So let's assume that you've gotten through the proof copy, your book's done. Here's one of the best things, one of the best things about um, the print-on-demand copy here is that you can order copies at cost. So the last book I put up, I believe, was about 25,000 words. So it wasn't a very large book. But I put the book up, and print-on-demand copy of the book from CreateSpace, they only charged me, I think it was like $2.25 for, for a copy of the book at cost. In other words, if I wanted to order 100 copies of my book, and I could take them out and sell them however I want on my website or whatever. I could go to CreateSpace, order them at $2 a copy, and just have them shipped to my office. And, and, and believe me, it, it's a beautiful thing. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more how to do that in the next couple slides. The other great thing about this is that when you create a print version of your book, the book is going to be linked up on Amazon as an option for a person to order it digitally or via print. That's another reason why I use CreateSpace, because they'll link it up faster on Amazon. And I'll show you on the next page what that looks like, okay? The other thing I want you to know versus the, the, the whole print-on-demand thing is that nobody knows the difference. And this is something that a lot of people get really stuck on, because they're like, well, Jim, my book isn't going to look as good as everybody else's book. Let's be honest. Nobody knows the difference. It's going to look just as good as every other book. They're going to get a printed copy of the book delivered to them. It's going to come in the mail. They're going to open it up. They're going to look at it and they go, this is a, a print book. Nobody's going to know the difference. No, also, nobody's going to know that there's not a, a warehouse of 10,000 books sitting around. All they're going to know is that when they go to Amazon, they're going to have the option to order the book as a Kindle book or a mass market paperback book. They're not gonna. They're not gonna know the difference, and and this is something that's really, really key and important that everyone needs to realize. When you sell books, you sell anything. You want to give the reader as many options as, or the reader or the customer, or whatever. You want to give them as many options as they want. Yes, there are going to be people in the world who do not want to have a digital book. That's why you do this whole print-on-demand option, so that when they go to Amazon, they can decide to order the book in the digital version, or they can order the printed version of the book. And nobody's going to know the difference. Nobody's going to go to the page on Amazon and go, oh, look, it's just a paperback. Oh, it's not published by a traditional publisher. Let's be honest here. Nobody's looking for that kind of stuff. You need to stop worrying about what customers think. The truth is, what they really want is the information delivered to them in the format that, that's easiest for them, the fastest possible way. Now, you'll notice that the book I have on screen here, the digital version of the book is $9.95. I priced this book kind of high because I think it's a really good book. Um, but the mass market paperback version of the book I have for $15.47. So once you get a cost from CreateSpace, this is really key. So let's say CreateSpace gives you a cost of $2.50. Okay, you can mark your book up whatever you want to sell it. So let's say that you want to sell your book, your print version of your book for uh, $15. Whatever you mark up is what you're going to make. So CreateSpace is only going to charge you. They're going to take out whatever the cost of the book was. So if the cost of the book was $2 and you charge $15, CreateSpace is taking $2 out and you make $13. So there's a way to actually make a lot of money from selling paperback books as well on print-on-demand because you can mark it up to whatever you want. Now, if you want to know more about pricing and all that stuff, again, go to authormarketingclub.com, uh, go into the forums, or look at some of the videos where we talk about 
how to price your books. That's for a whole other webinar discussion. We're almost done here, guys. We're really cruising through this, okay? So, and I will take questions at the end if anyone has any questions. Um, so there's the book as a digital version and a printed book version. I should have taken a picture of my um, of my book uh, in printed form so you can actually see what it looks like. Now, you can buy your books at low cost and sell them at a high cost. Now, to give you a good example of how I'm doing this today. So I bought printed versions of my, my latest book, and I'm going to an event to speak uh, in, in two days in Chicago. I'm taking those printed versions of my book with me, and I'm going to take them, and I'm going to sell them to people in the audience. I'm going to sign them, and I'm going to put up a little sign on a table that says, buy them for 15 bucks or 10 bucks, whatever I decide. I only paid $2 for them. So I'm making $8 a copy if I sell them myself. So I can make money selling my books to people in a room, to people uh, at a show, people wherever you want to take your books. This is another great reason to have print books. And, and by the way, the credibility of having a print book, we didn't even really talk about this. One of the greatest things about having a print book for your business or your brand is that people just look at you differently when you can hand them a physical product. You know, I have a book out there called Write a FN Book Already. If you haven't read that book, go to jimcucobooks.com and download it. I don't have the print version ready yet. But go download that book and read it, and you can read about all the reasons why it makes sense to write books. Okay, that wasn't the point of this webinar. The point of this webinar was just to show you how to make print or, and digital books, okay, and why it's important. The credibility of having print books is unbelievable. That's why I still believe it's so important for you to do print books. But a lot of people get sucked into this world thinking that it's only digital. They can't do print. I've just... I've, Taking that away from that, I've proven to you today that you don't have to do that and how simple and easy and cost effective and smart it is for you to do print on demand books as well. I can take my books and I can ship them out to clients. When I get a new book done in print form, one of the best things I love to do is take it, sign it, <coughs> excuse me, with a personal note in it and send it out to old clients. And it's a nice goodwill thing and it keeps, them in my, keeps me in their minds. Another great thing to do with your print books is ship them out to prospective clients. Anyone who you think who's ever going to potentially buy from you, boy, i got to tell you, there's really no better way to get a customer and impress somebody than to pull out a copy of your book and hand it to them or ship it to them. I've seen this done in meetings where you can actually be sitting there talking to a customer who you're hoping is going to buy from you. And they say, ask you a question. And you pull out a copy of your book out of your bag, your briefcase, and you say, oh, well, I actually wrote a book that answers that question. Here's a copy of my book. This is really just an amazing move that you can use to close business. And I'm telling you right now, if you do that in a job interview, if you do that to prospective clients, the odds of you getting the job or the odds of you getting that client jump a 1,000%. Because when people see that you wrote a book about something, even if it's a short book, they immediately create this place in their mind that you are an expert, that you are somebody that is somebody they should pay attention to. You guys all know this to be true. Think about that. All the business that you've been trying to close over the years, if you were able to walk into a room and hand that person a book that said, here's what I know about this topic, you would have a much better chance of getting that job. So the last point I want to make to you today as we wrap up is I want you to forget about bookstores. And this is something that so many authors just get caught up on. Bookstores are going away. Even the independent bookstores are not going to move the needle for your books. And I know the reason you want to be in a bookstore is because it's just kind of like an ego thing. It's like, boy, wouldn't it, I mean, I felt it too. I mean, when my first book was published, I thought, man, I can't wait to go and see my book sitting on a shelf in a bookstore. Here's the truth about that. Because I wasn't a, a best-selling author, a proven author, Barnes & Noble and Borders and those guys, they did not order uh, anything more than a few hundred copies of my books to be placed in their bookstores. When I did the research, I figured it out that my book, after publishing, was in about one out of every three Barnes & Noble stores across the country. Even the stores that were within an hour of my house only had one copy of my book. 
one copy, and I was working with a traditional publisher whose job was to get my book in the bookstores. They couldn't even convince Barnes & Noble to, to buy more books. Why? Because their business is crumbling. They don't, it just makes logical sense. They don't order tons of books that they aren't sure aren't going to sell. That's why I'm telling you to forget bookstores, because unless you are a proven author, no bookstore is going to order your book because they are in business to sell books. They're not going to order 100 copies of your book if they aren't sure it's going to sell. That's the bottom line, plain and simple. So forget bookstores. You want to produce your book and sell your book on your own, through Amazon and through your own channels. This is the future. Unless somebody comes up with this magic way to save bookstores in the future. I want you to stop worrying about bookstores. It's not going to happen. If you, if you really, really want to sell in bookstores, here's what I suggest you do. I suggest you go have a ton of print-on-demand copies of your book made. And I suggest you walk into every independent bookstore from Maine to San, San Diego on your own time and walk in with books and go, hey, would you put these books on your shelves? Um, and they'll say no. And you'll say, well, wait a minute. Um, uh, sell them at 10 bucks, and then for every you keep five and I'll keep the rest of the money and they're going to say no because we don't know if this book's going to sell and we don't know if people want this book the book business has dramatically changed it's not going to happen I'd say focus your energy on, on creating your book putting it up online getting it out to prospective customers using it to drive sales leads and, and publicity for your business all right so I own a company called digitalbooklaunch.com. We specialize in creating uh, books and helping authors uh, who run businesses and who run brands and helping them do book marketing. So if you are a business or if you know of anyone who runs a business, could be a one-person business, could be a 1,000 people business, 10,000 people. You know you need to have a book to write it for the direct purpose of doing of creating sales and leads and publicity for your business. Because you're never going to have to pay for advertising again if you can create a book that will drive sales and leads for you. This is how I generate business for my consulting uh, business, for my book business. I create webinars. I create books. I write books about how to write books. And in those books, I drive people back to my club. I drive people back to digital book launch. And people come to me and they schedule appointments with me and I use those appointments to teach people and to close business about how to create books. And that's what Digital Book Launch does. So if you are interested in learning about how to actually create a book that's going to actually drive leads and sales for you, then you need to contact me and we'll do a free consultation and we'll talk about how we can help you. There's my email there at the bottom. Please email me if you want to get in touch and have that free consultation about how to do a book. Um, authormarketingclub.com, please go to authormarketingclub.com. It's free. It's a free book marketing resource place. You can learn all about how to um, create and market books. There's a forum. There's training. There's tools. There's everything you can possibly need as an author, and it's totally free. We talked about digital book launch, and you can also follow me on Twitter at, uh, at slash jimcukrell.com, or slash jimcukrell, not .com. So let's take a few questions. Thanks very much, everyone, for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time. 